Welcome to part 2, Basics of DC to AC Power Inverter. You may remember the first experiment with the uh, wall plug connector that I used like reverse mode. And I connected a battery to it and this uh, light bulb, LED light bulb lit up every time I connected the battery and disconnected it. So this is the improved version. Here we have the 50 to 60 Hz oscillator again that you have seen before. And here I have a new circuit. I still have my transformer with the 12 volt windings here and the 230 volt windings here. Also my power supply is still set to 12 volts. But now as you can see I have built a rather complex circuit which is there. These are four MOSFETs. Over here we have P-channel MOSFETs and over here we have N-channel MOSFETs. These are comparable like to a PNP transistor and a NPN transistor. And here is the schematic, which is quite confusing. So here are the P-channel MOSFETs, they are sitting on plus. And here are the N-channel MOSFETs, they are sitting on minus. And as you can see, here is one gate, the gates are connected with one pulse. And here are both gates connected as well. And here is the same pulse, but it's inverted like 180 degrees. What does that mean? So here is our oscillator. And as I said before, it does not only require to generate the frequency, it also requires to generate for a good inverter two pulses. One pulse that is like Q1 and Q2 which is the other pulse which is pretty much the inverted version of Q1. Of course this drawing isn't really fancy pantsy but I think you get what I want to show you. So every time Q1 is turned on, Q2 is turned off. Every time Q2 is turned on, Q1 is turned off. And you want to have this with a duty cycle of 50%. That means that 50% of the time Q1 is turned on then Q1 is turned off and the other 50% of 100% time Q2 is turned on. If you don't get that right, I'll soon show you what happens. But first of all, here is the circuit. So here comes the Q1 pulse and here comes the Q2 pulse. If Q1 is activated, I'm using a NPN transistor here. This uh, circuit, this MOSFET here is disabled. Okay. And this MOSFET here is enabled. At the same time, this MOSFET here is disabled through to the other transistor and this MOSFET here is enabled through to the other transistor. And so the current flows like here is plus and here is minus. So now it gets reversed and this MOSFET is activated, this MOSFET is activated and this MOSFET is not activated and this MOSFET is not activated. These are the, these two transistors. They are always switching the MOSFETs like Q1 and Q2. So either these two or these two. And depending on which one is activated, either on this side is plus or on this side is plus. And meanwhile on this side is plus, of course there can't be minus on this side. Minus is then there and if here is plus, minus is there. So it's like always switching. And this is alternating current. And now we don't feed a DC pulsed signal like as if you would hold the battery very fast. I attempt to show you that. So this, uh, the first thing we made was we took the wires and we hold them very fast to the battery. But now it would be like as if you were holding the wires like this and like this and like this and like this and turn them every time very fast. So this transformer really gets alternating current. And here is my setup. I'm putting in 12 volts from the power supply. I'll turn on the power supply now. And here you can see the output voltage from the transformer. We are in the 250 volts range. That means we're having around 215 something volts. 215, 220. I think the half would be 225. So I think we're having 220 or something. Okay, we have 220 volts. We can, of course, shortly connect to this light bulb. And as you can see, it's already pretty bright. But there's another question. We are putting in 12 volts, which con gets converted to, to AC by the circuit here. We are putting it in on the 12 volt winding. Why aren't there 230 volts on the output? I mean, this is 12 volts and this is 230 volts winding. Well, I can tell you why. The first thing is we aren't putting in a sine wave signal. Usually if you have a transformer and you're connected to the mains, you have a sine wave signal. What we put in is a square wave signal like this. So the it gets on, on maximum voltage, then it stays for a while and then it goes back, not a sine wave. And if you put a square wave signal into a transformer, it will not be able, at least these transformers, it will not be able to have the same efficiency and power than, a sine, uh, than if, as if they were connected to a sine wave signal. 
Keep in mind that these transformers are still having a quite good efficiency for what they are, but it's a little bit worse with uh, this signal here. And as you have seen in the first video where I was testing different transistors and I was comparing the Darlington transistor to a MOSFET, keep in mind that MOSFETs, even they are better than transistors for this application, uh, have an inner, an inner resistance. And you are adding up resistance here, like it's just having an inner resistance of, like say, a, a fifth or so of an ohm, a fifth of an ohm, a few milliohms. But if you connect two in series of these MOSFETs, you are adding the resistors and you have like 0 0.2 ohms or something like that. You are increasing the value of the ohms and also we have a high current flowing over this. And if you eventually know, if you add high current to a resistor, there is going to be a voltage drop on the resistor. And the higher the resistor is, the higher the voltage drop is going to be. So this is pretty much what happens. This is one of the reasons why there aren't 230 volts output. The other reason is this uh, 12 volts is the uh, so-called, uh, I don't know the English word right now, but it's the, it's, it's the voltage that you write on a transformer if you're using it with load. The uh, voltage on this transformer without load is like 13 volts, 14 volts. It's a little bit higher than the voltage with load. And now if I go to my power supply again and turn it on, and I'm slightly increasing the voltage on the power supply, you will also see that the voltage on the meter is going to increase, as you can see. So now we are around, let's say, I think we now, if we are in this range, we should have around 230 volts as we require it from the transformer. I can hear it buzzing very silently, but you probably can't hear it on camera. But the transformer is now buzzing. Now another thing that is an issue with these power inverters. Well, so now we have a, the 50 to 60 Hertz oscillator. Here we have the MOSFET a full bridge that makes an AC signal from the DC current, DC supply. And of course, here we have a transformer that we're using backwards. We are putting in 12 volt AC and we get out 230 volts AC mains voltage. Okay, everything is fine. Now let's connect the load. In this case, this 25 volt light bulb. And as you can see, with the light bulb connected, the voltage dropped. I mean, the needle was before like here and now it dropped. Also, as you can see, the current consumption increases. Of course, it's just the logical cause of this thing. So the voltage dropped. What do you need to do now? Well, there's a simple solution. You make a circuit, another circuit. And I just show the circuit. I think it would require quite some time to wire it up on this device. This is a voltage regulation circuit, a voltage regulation circuit. And what it does is, I'm going into 1000 volts range. I'm now putting in more, like I'm putting in 15 volts in the transformer, okay? I'm putting in 15 volts. So, and as you can see by the voltage, we are, we are nearly having 300 volts now. Nearly 300 volts. I'll turn it off. Uh, we are having now 300 volts, which of course is too much. And what the circuit does is, you, you adjust it like 15, oops, it has been unadjusted. You adjust it like 15 volts and you put the circuit in series. You connect it between plus, so here's my plus lead. You connect this circuit between plus of this full bridge and, uh, I, I'm sorry, you connect this circuit here. Here's plus from my power supply. You connect the circuit here to plus from the power supply and the output from the circuit connects to the full bridge. And then the output from the transformer gets connected to the input from the circuit. So it gets connected here to the input from the circuit. And what the circuit then does is very simple. It does regulate the voltage. I will show you that in the, in the next video. So if you have, if you want to call it like that, empty run, uh, you would have 300 volts, nearly 300 volts as we saw. But with this circuit, the circuit will control the voltage. So if you don't connect the light bulb, it will put out 230 volts or less or more. You can adjust it with the potentiometer. But if you connect the voltage, uh, if you connect the light bulb, the voltage, of course, would drop, not with the circuit. The circuit will notice the connected light bulb and will increase the amount of power that flows to this uh, full bridge, and then it will stabilize it to 230 volts again. So this is the voltage stabilization circuit that is needed to hold the voltage on the output of the inverter stable. 
I now hook it up to the DC to AC power inverter and in the next video you are going to see it if you want to call it like that in action. And one more word about power inverters and transformers. Uh, if you choose a transformer for a power inverter, uh, you, you need to do it like that. Take the supply voltage, for example 12 volts, and then calculate minus 3 volts. For example, for a 12 volt car battery inverter, I recommend a transformer that has like this one, 9 volts. As you have seen before, if you're using a 12 volt transformer and put in 12 volt, it does put out less voltage than you want. So you have to put in more voltage. And also you have to keep in mind that if you connect a load to it, the voltage is going to drop. So, as I said, if you want to build one of these power inverters, choose a transformer that has 3 volts less than your supply voltage. For example, I have a 12 volts transformer there. I'm putting in 15 volts to get my uh, circuit working and everything all right. Okay, that was part two, full bridge circuit that actually generates real AC for the transformer. Part two about simple power inverter basics.